Welcome to this healing video that will clear and restore your nervous system and energetically ground you. I was doing the energy for this video before, so I'll address my eyes red. <laughs> Clearly I had a lot of nerve um, targeting going on around my left eye that I wasn't aware of until I um, started focusing and clearing it now. Um, for this video there'll be two parts. The first part, um, overall this energy clearing video, it will both um, work on your nervous system and ground you. But as I go through this, the first part, I'm going to talk about nervous system clearing, nervous system targeting, um, nervous system th strengthening, etc. Um, as well as entity symptoms in general. And in the second part, I'll talk about grounding. So if you're more interested in one of those two, feel free to um, jump to that specific part. So, I've just knocked my water bottle over. I've got some dot points that I've written out and I'm just going to talk off them um, as talking points so I stay on track. So the first thing I'll talk about is what is the nervous system and where is it? Now ho hopefully if you're here you're aware of the nervous system in the physical body. Essentially you have large channels um, throughout your body and that is where you feel things through physically. But the nervous system also exists in the energy body. So in the third dimension physically your nervous system is in your physical body, but in the energy realm, in the grand scheme of things, your nervous system exists in all the dimensions you exist in. For, for right now, we'll keep it simple. We'll just say the fourth to twelfth dimension. So negative entities, unless you're in a lot of trouble, they're not physically manifested in the third dimension. They're in the fourth to really ninth dimension. And that is where they target your nervous system. Um, I'll talk about why they target it. Uh, the nervous system, for pretty much any targeted person and regular people in general, is a really commonly targeted area. They, t they target it because so long as they can get in your nervous system, they can cause much more pain than if they could if they targeted another area. If entities target your bones or your muscular system, they can cause aches and pains but that all tends to go through your nervous system. By targeting your nervous system directly, um, they can feed off any kind of negative feeling you have, annoyance, <laughs> you know, any kind of suffering feeling. Um, by doing this, well, they do it for two reasons. Number one, negative entities, they just love tormenting people. It's how they're programmed. It's what they are, they're just manifestations of malice. It's, for the most part, it's what they love. And the second part is by targeting your um, nervous system. <laughs> you can tell I'm, I'm being grounded a bit too much by my own, by my own energy. Um, by targeting your nervous system, they get your physical um, and mental self basically to gradually become more irritable and to get you thinking in a more negative way, which will lower your frequencies, allowing them to more easily target you. I'm going to talk about frequency targeting, um, how frequencies work um, in the grounding part. But for right now, just think that the more irritable you are, the more pain you're in, the, the less of being in a you know any kind of joyful or positive state you're going to be in. All right, I had I've had nervous pain. Most likely, if you're here. You've had random nerve pain. If you're not, if, if you haven't, that's terrific. Um, but for a lot of targeted people, we tend to have a lot of random nerve pain um, for little to no reason. I'm going to talk about arthritis, fibromyalgia, and other nervous disorders. I'm going to single those ones out in particular because I've had clients with, thankfully I've never had arthritis. <laughs> um, but I've had clients who've had them and I've worked on them. So I know what's going on there. At least from a few different people, it was practically the same thing. I know what's going on with the causes of these. Now, arthritis and fibromyalgia can, and other nervous disorders can, of course, be physical problems as well. So if if you get your arm impaled on a rusty spike, that's a physical problem. That's very clearly real. But these things can also be brought about energetically through no fault of your own, just because you're targeted. Um... I'm going to talk about arthritis first. So there are two, and this is from the NHS website, there are two most common types of arthritis. There is osteoarthritis, which causes cartilage to break down, 
around the joints, mainly in the fingers, um, but it can also be the basically the bone joints, the cartilage around there deteriorates and your bones end up getting closer together and almost rubbing together and that can be a major problem. I hadn't thought about really any kind of cartilage work and this video will not do cartilage work because um, it's, it's never something I've really looked into at this moment but when I was 17 I had chronic back pain for essentially what must have been almost or if, if not an entire year and I went to the doctor when I was 17 and he said oh you have just you're missing a huge amount of cartilage in your lower back you have a he didn't say to deteriorate it was just missing um, and he said well there are two options you can either go and work out and just build up muscles in your lower back and by doing so the muscles will compensate for the lack of cartilage you have and your back pain will go away or you can get very expensive surgery um, and very painful surgery so I went okay I, I'll just go and work out and that's what I did but the fact that arthritis is also caused, or that osteoarthritis is cartilage targeting, I'd say um, negative entities, they're not exactly original. I'd say this is the main way that they target people is by targeting the cartilage as it's not something you're really looking at or focusing on, even if you do do energy work and can restore it. And you can, theoretically, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to energetically restore and regrow not just energetic cartilage, but physical cartilage as well. You'd regrow it energetically, and then it would manifest physically and regrow. Um, but I'd say that's the way that entities... I wouldn't say it's common, but it's certainly not a rare way they target us, especially if it's one of the two main causes of arthritis. The other main cause of arthritis is rheumatoid arthritis, which causes the immune system to attack joints in the body. Often, in my experience, any kind of illness that involves the immune system at attacking things that shouldn't be attacking blood cells at attacking your baby or really just turning on the host is often done via well there, there are two ways it can either be energetically you have so much negative energy and negative entities going on that you're now in a very negative state and it's attacking anything potentially positive so, such as your joints or they have put negative programs inside of you which are causing your immune system to act the way they want instead of what you want. Now, could there be physical reasons for this? Yes. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm more so going about this. And I'm not discounting if your doctor says a physical reason for it. He's most likely not wrong. But there is most likely an energetic aspect to it as well. Especially if you've never done anything physically to cause it. Um, with this video, if you have arthritis, as, as it goes through, your arthritis symptoms may flare up. Um, oftentimes, or with really energy clearing, the symptoms can flare up. These, these are what I call entity symptoms. Um, this is a major reason why you may have an illness that's really unexplainable okay so let's say you have arthritis and it may go away for years and then suddenly something very stressful happens and then two years three years later it comes back or something triggers it like the cold or extreme heat and it comes back the reason for this is your energetic resistance had increased to a point where the symptoms you were having before the entities were no longer really able to push them and cause them and then they waited and they built up their time or something traumatic happened and your resistance goes down and then they can attack you. Um, entity symptoms, pretty much any unex unexplainable disease, anything that really just falls out of the sky and hits people can be entity related. I'm grounding really well. I'm definitely, um, when I get to the grounding part, I'll explain exactly what I'm feeling now because it would just um, detract from what I'm talking about here. So, I'm going to talk about uh, fibromyalgia now. I've had a few clients with that as well. So, fibromyalgia is a disease that I never looked up until yesterday, 
um, but seems to be a blanket term for someone who is energetically targeted. This is from the NHS website as well. Um, the, symptoms the symptoms may include, for fibromyalgia, increased sensitivity to pain. Um, that's something that most targeted people just get. And over time, your just mental tolerance and will tolerance to pain increases as a result of having to live with it. Um, chronic fatigue, which negative entities love to cause to pretty much it. Um, it's, the more fatigued you can be, the less likely you're going to go out in the sun, you're going to really go anywhere that's grounding. You're, uh, even just moving around is annoying for negative entities as you're moving around your own energy while you're just walking to a small extent. Um, so they love to cause chronic fatigue. It causes insomnia, brain fog, headaches, and IBS. Um, it is suggested it can be inherited in the genes. Now, it, the NHS say it can be suggested because they don't know for a fact that it can be gene related. So when I've worked on people who have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, it can be, well, th there can be various causes, but let's say it is genetic. Their grandmother had it or their grandfather had it and it's been passed down uh, the bloodline. This can often be because of a soul contract that your 40 generations ago grandma signed, or it can be uh, a bloodline curse. And so this way of targeting goes down your bloodline and it manifests as fibromyalgia symptoms. As this, um, I forgot to mention this earlier. As this goes through, you may feel warmth in your nervous system. Any entity symptoms you do have. So let's say you have arthritis and you get really bad pain on your left wrist. That pain may flare up and then it will gradually diminish. If you go, if you play the video, you go, ah, my arm hurts, and you stop, you basically kick, <laughs> you've kicked a bear um, in the head. I was going to say somewhere else. You've kicked a bear in the head and it's now very angry. Now, if you keep the video on, that bear's just going to get erased and it's not going to be an issue. Um, so I'd recommend try and play it through at least once the first time if you are having entity symptoms. You may, this may be, um, and this will be a very rare small amount of people, but I feel it's important to say, this may, this may be very painful clearing for you and you may just want to play it once a day or once every four or five days. And each time, if you've got a lot of targeting in your nervous system and just an absolute humongous amount, okay, you're 90 years old. Or you feel like you're 90 years old, like I used to when I was 14. Um, each time the pain will flare up and then it'll decrease um, and clear. And each time it will just come back at in lesser and lesser amounts as more layers are coming up and they have less and less energy to work with. Um, there's a question. Marola, sometimes I feel out of place, can't focus and not feeling in my body. Um, can it be because of targeting of her nervous system? It could, she thought it could also be because of lack of vitamins or bad grounding too. The nervous system is such a massive thing in our entire body that it can really manifest <laughs> whatever it wants. It can cause IBS by targeting nerves in your bowels. It can cause brain fog. It can cause fatigue. Um, the answer is you'll see how you go with this video. It could be the nervous system with energy clearing. A lot of it is just trial and error. Okay, you work on your nervous system, you've cleared there, you've, you've done a good job, but the problem you're trying to get at isn't fixed. Okay, so then you go and work on another system or your energy body or your code body and you'll just keep moving through and eventually you'll aim to find um, the root cause of that. Uh, the conditions for fibromyalgia trigger or worsen under stress. There is no test for it. So if you have some or all the symptoms, you may have it or something similar. It is thought to be related to a chemical imbalance in the body. Um, so just like I said before, and the thing is, I'm not going to discount um, it being a physical chemical imbalance, but the chemical imbalance, and that's most likely a cause for it, but the chemical imbalance can be caused by your energy having a massive imbalance, which is then physically manifested into your body. Um, the reason why it worsens under stress, so let's say you've got a resistance of eight and the negative entities targeting you have, let's say an attack level of six, right? 
So, well, well, let's say when you first had Fab Mirage, you had a resistance of four, and then just through willpower and saying, f fighting back against it, even if you weren't energy training, that will increase your energetic resistance. So you're now at an eight, and it's a six, right? But then you have a, someone die, um, <laughs> your house falls down, <laughs> something really annoying happens, right? And your resistance, because you're mentally and emotionally really damaged, it, it goes down temporarily to a three. So then this thing to six can come back and it can come back worse than before because you may have, when you had a four, it was at five and now it's just being in you and building up over time. Uh, George says he had fibromyalgia five years ago and managed to heal from it. That's impressive, George. Uh, feel free to write out how you healed from it. Um, I'm going to talk about Energetic manifestation of illnesses and phantom pains. Fan, phantom pains. So phantom pains can be a precur precursor to physical manifestations of an illness. What do I mean by that? So you may feel like you have pain in a certain area, um, particular problems, energetically, but there is absolutely nothing physically there. Um, I've my own example. When I was 22, yes, so in 2017. I had, I whenever I went to go to sleep, this was this did not happen whatsoever until I'd lay in bed. And then I'd lay in bed and I would get really bad nerve pain just up my arm. It felt like, it was like barbed wire in my arm for about a month. I had no idea what it was. Yeah, it was at least four or five weeks. And it was really annoying. I'd go to sleep. I'd, I'd go to go to sleep and I'd just have this feeling on my arm and go, all right, th this is great. And then one night I was trying to sleep and a negative entity manifested physically in my bedroom right in front of me. It was, um, I'll paint the picture. So down the bottom was a snake's tail and then there was a black warlocky type robe. And then out came two humanoid snake hands. And by that I mean hands with just covered in um, flesh. I think it had four fingers. And it had a black like, crystal ball in front of it. And then out of the black robe came a snake head. And I thought, oh great, okay. This guy's annoying. I'm, I'm going back to sleep. I went to sleep and I woke up the next day and I had shingles. Now, do I believe that entity gave me shingles? And the answer is yes. Yes, I do. But it didn't give me shingles in one night. It would have most likely sent minions that weren't very strong and weren't physically manifesting to energetically. And it most likely would have come even a month ago or perhaps even four months ago and laid some groundwork and then over time, as that was in my energy and feeding off my energy, it got stronger. And then I started having symptoms and energetic symptoms. And then when it had enough of a foothold in me, it showed up and I got shingles physically. And it was really, really annoying. And then uh, at this stage, I wasn't energy training. No, no, I was not energy training. So I, I had it treated physically. I went to the doctor and I don't even remember what I was given. But um, And shingles is a illness that is along the nervous system. For anyone who doesn't know, it's basically the chicken pox, but for adults, okay? You only get the chicken pox once. And then when you get ch chicken pox again, you get shingles and it normally follows along one of your nerves. And I had it on two of my nerves in my body. So it was manifested energetically by negative entities who just <laughs> were targeting me. Um, what the reason for that I really to just cause pain suffering make it easier to feed off me um, you can treat energetically caused illnesses once they manifest physically you can't really treat them before they physically manifest so if you were to try and take medicine for an illness that is not physically in your body but you're feeling it energetically um, the physical pill you're taking will have an energetic part of it but it will be less effective because it's really not the pills designed for it's designed to go into your physical body and um, and work it out but it can potentially cure an energetic illness but then at that point you may as well just be taking placebos because so long as um, you believe it's working you're really using your own energy and that's just some really good medicine um, that's what's going on there so that's why phantom pains for an illness can often show up before you've actually got the illness um, next, I'm going to talk about phantom pains after you've had an illness. So let's say you had like really bad, you injured your arm really badly, you injured your, say, a tooth really badly. 
and you've got pain there. And often, let's say if you physically injured your arm, but you can t touch a specific pot and spot and the pain goes down right away. Um, once you're physically healed from that, oftentimes there is damage done to your energy body. So you have not really physically recovered from it. Your energy body, if you are in a clean energetic area, it will just heal up on its own unless you've got some very serious targeting. Um, but that is why there is often phantom pain of an illness when you've already cleared it. And it's why, it, let's say you break your arm six years, uh, six years ago very badly, and then six years later, your wife leaves you, and you feel like you've had your arm broken. It's because your uh, energetic resistance has come right down, and these negative entities are targeting whichever wound is more susceptible for targeting. So for me, first of all, I don't have a wife, so that makes it pretty easy. But if my wife were to leave me, right, they wouldn't be able to target my broken arm because I've never had a broken arm. They would target probably my lower back because that is where I had a weakness in the past. And they'll also always try and target the same areas for different people because that has more of a mental blow on you. So if you broke your arm and then your wife leaves you and you start getting really bad knee pain, you think, okay, well, this is a new thing. That's very annoying. It's not like, oh, my wife left me and my arm feels like it's broken again. That has more of an energetic toll, especially if you are energetically clearing because like you feel, come on, you, you know, you've trained for all these years and suddenly the pain that you had years ago is suddenly back. That's why they do it because um, it's also a mental blow. Um... I'm going to talk about more about uh, the energetic aspect of the nervous system now. So false white light entities and well, pretty much everything else put implants in us that tend to cause physical pain to dissuade energetic growth. Oftentimes, if you are going the right way energetically, when you first start training, okay, so let's say you're doing the fundamentals of energy, things may go really smoothly. And then suddenly, three months, four months in, when you're really going on the ball, they go, oh, hang on, this guy's actually training and getting stronger. We need to stop this. So they may put an implant in you that when you're doing the waterfall technique or grounding, you feel more irritable or you start, they start putting blockages in your way. They, they did that to me. Um, they just, when I first started, it was really easy. And then they just started adding blockages and blockages. If that does happen to you, you can really, the God bubble, they can't block because it just comes straight out from your um, soul pretty much. Even if you've got a tiny sliver of soul left, you can still bring that out. So they can't block that and you can keep going ahead um, with that. The main reason why they will... So a question I asked myself was if they have this kind of power to make it that I, whenever I'm doing energy work, it's just getting harder and harder, why wouldn't they just implant me with things and cause things that just cause pain and problems 24-7? And the answer is they don't have unlimited energy. Most of the time they're feeding off your energy because they don't, negative entities don't produce any energy um, themselves. So they are utilizing as much energy uh, to be cost effective for themselves in order to stop you energy training. If they had the energy for you to suffer all the time, they would, they would do it. Um, but because they don't have that energy, they go, okay, we need to target this guy to stop him sleeping and we need to target him to stop him energy training. Those are the main two things energies will try to prevent. They may be like, we need to stop them <laughs> playing the video. So when you go to play video, you may start getting pain. Um, that can happen as well. But so long as you keep energy training and pushing through it, and it could be really annoying at times, you will gradually get out of that problem. Now, I've talked about how this will work on your nervous system from the fourth to fourth dimension. It will also work on your nervous system in the third dimension. A actually, in terms of nervous system restoration of the physical body, it is much easier to heal someone who is, let's say, not energetically targeted and just damages a nervous system on something, a frying pan or etc., than it is to work on someone who is energetically targeted because on someone who is not, all right? So they would have nerve pain, nerve damage, and you would energetically see the reflection of it on their energy body, you would clear that, and then it would manifest into the physical world and it would restore. On someone who is targeted, all right? They've got 
nerve pain, nerve damage, and you go in to fix it, and there's just a whole lot of vampiric entities and other negative entities in there that get in the way. Um, so in general, it is much harder to fix someone who is energetically targeted and has got nerve problems because of nervous system targeting energetically than it is from someone who <laughs> has a physical problem. Um, and most physical problems, there is also an energetic compound to them. You can't really have one without the other. So, if anyone has any questions about the nervous system, and with this video, as it goes through, it will also strengthen your nervous system energetically, which will gradually strengthen your nervous system physically as well. So if anyone has any questions about nervous systems, let me know. Yes, George, that, that would explain why you had um, snakes in your waterfall energy um, pretty much the moment you went to do it, but when you were just sitting around, they weren't bugging you. And it would also be when you were trying to sleep. Um, another way they target you, and I believe I talked about this in the shorty video, is when you're driving. <laughs> Something where you have to focus, you can't really just you know ignore your surroundings and go, go within and find out what's targeting you. They'll do that as well. Um, sleeping, driving, and energy training are the three things well, mainly driving they just target you because they can't um, but sleeping and energy training they're the main things they really don't want you doing they that's a constant for pretty much everyone um, with entity targeting so next I'm going to talk about grounding so to start with I'll say what is grounding I'm going to talk about fundamental grounding and then I'll talk about more advanced grounding um, feel free to talk about how you're energetically feeling um, in the comments right now as well so grounding the I'm trying to think about the easiest way to explain this grounding is an act of taking any external energy that is not yours that's not your personal energy but you can take your own personal energy out as well if you want um, but essentially any external energy especially negative energy that you don't want in your body so in the Fundamentals of Energy Class 2, you picture your energy going into the ground. That is fundamental grounding. When you first start grounding, you do want to essentially make the intention to take the energy out of you and put it into the um, nature and the earth externally. Um, that's how that works. Now, there are a few grounding misconceptions, mainly caused by false white light corruption. So, the a major misconception is that grounding will make your powers weaken. If you ground, you'll lose all of your powers. There was, um, I'm trying to think what year this was, 2019. Yes, in 2019, I was, I went to the beach and I was just doing some grounding and I remember clearing a lot and I got really grounded and when I left the beach after a few hours, I was having trouble remote viewing and I could only remote view instantly. Like I can still do that instantly. But I was like, oh, I, it's like there's nothing there. I'm just really, really grounded. And I thought, that's not good. I don't want my... <laughs> I don't want to lose my powers. What was happening there was my energy essentially got very grounded and it was turning off different things to do inner work. That can occasionally happen where your energy... And it's, it's you're often really well off. It'll do things faster than you could have done if you were working on yourself that whole time, um, for the most part. So if you're very grounded and this may happen from this video your energy may close itself off to you and for a few days to even a few weeks your energy is within and when you go to use it you feel like whiplash it's like no stop it's it's working within this is normal now try and check for blockages make sure nothing's happening there but that is often um what happens with grounding one of the misconceptions for grounding is that it, you'll get a lot weaker False white light entities, it's mainly false white light entities because if you're working with demonic entities, which I don't do, but if, let's say, okay, you're you're full on like, all right, I'm going to be evil, okay, demonic energy all the way, or even if you're not doing it for evil, you're like, no, I'll try the false white light ones, they suck, evil all, <laughs> demonic energy all the way, right? Then you're not going to want to ground because, yeah, you're going to, nature is not going to like, unless you're in corrupted nature, but even then, corrupted nature doesn't like demonic energy, it likes corrupted nature energy. That would make you weaker, okay? If you are getting powers from demonic entities, right, and you go to ground, yeah, those powers are going to weaken. 
Because <laughs> those are not good powers in the long term. Even in the short term. No, the trade-off for that is most likely not worth it. Um, I know if there's anyone who's doing demonic energy, this isn't really going to change their mind. Um, but you don't hear this from demonic people because they go, yeah, of course, I'm not going to try and ground. I don't want to lose my demons. But folks won't lie to people. People that are working with angels and um, fallen angels, fairies, unicorns, um, Pleiadians, Arcturians, Andromedans, uh, Egyptian gods, Greek gods, Hindu gods, uh, Norse gods, you name it. Okay, the false white light entities, they'll say, don't ground, because um, they'll, they'll often word it as something like, they're helping you get stronger by putting these various false white light implants, which may look like swords, they may have coded them as swords, um, or not coded, cloaked them as swords, um, they may look like positive implants, especially if you're first starting, you think, oh good, I'm getting a gift of like a lightning hammer from Zeus or Thor. <laughs> Probably from Thor, but um, Zeus could also give you a lightning hammer. And you go, oh, you go to Grand, and they say, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, that's bad. And you say, why? And they say, because um, that, that energy is not compatible with theirs. So I'll say some you know, nonsense like that. The reason they're saying this is because while these false white line entities will... They, they can benefit you in the short term. You can get powers and abilities from them. But in the long term, what they're doing to you is they are corrupting you and they are making it that you will begin to see less and less really for what it is. Um, and then you will essentially be a pawn of theirs and you will find out that all these other things they were giving you would there was basically no energy there, it wasn't a boost. You'll feel it's a boost because they've corrupted you so much that you can't really tell what's going on um, you know, in your... I'd say what's really going on energetically. You may have had that ability in discernment to begin with, but because you trusted them and let them implant you and do other things, that's what happened. So, folks like my people may say not to ground because you'll you know lose your Orion connection you'll lose all these false white light cords you'll lose your galactic federation membership and that's because the negative entities really don't want you just you know grounding and getting rid of them they you know spend a lot of work tricking people on getting them on board so when you're grounding externally you can do it there, there are many ways you can do it you can do it the way I teach in class too you can just put your hands on a tree um, the tree probably won't thank you for this, <laughs> but if you're just starting, you're really not working that much, with that much energy. You can put your hand on the tree and just pitch the energy going through the tree and then into the ground. Don't just fill up the tree, because the tree is going to get pretty mad. Um, yeah, if you just dump stuff on it, although it depends on the personality of the tree. This grounding video is not external grounding. This one, you do not need to go outside and lay in a field or heck, even just stand in your bedroom with two feet on the ground. This is internal grounding. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that now. I'm just going to answer some questions. Um, would a sudden injury jolt the nervous system into steady alert? Yes, um, oftentimes the universities, they can set something up and they can plan this for six months and then they will... Often you'll have an illness that, or an injury that doesn't make sense. Like you'll be walking and it's like someone just... <laughs> like pushes you in into like a table and it, the table goes into your uh, hip bone and it hurts a lot. That happened to me a lot as a teenager. It was really annoying getting pushed into things. You get pushed down the stairs or you get pushed and a part of your leg scrapes the stairs. That happened twice in two weeks. Um, they can do that. They'll plan for these things. They'll build up energy by stealing your own energy or stealing other people's energy and then hip they'll just manifest enough physically to hit you and then because you've got a physical weakness they will then activate all the things they've been planning and building up in you for all that time and cause problems there um could entities target my teen's nose piercing she had this infection slash red bump that won't go away yes yes they very much could um in terms of nose piercing so okay so first off could physically be an infection, right? Let's just say that's unlikely. If the person giving the infection had a lot of tattoos, especially demonic tattoos, and had a lot of demonic energy, when she's giving that piercing, 
uh, or really physically touching her. Um, if your teen is energy training and she's energetically done some clearing, she's m clearer. So people touching her, she'll be more affected by it rather than just being under layers of, of crap. So this person could touch her or it could even be the person herself is fine but the air is negative and when she pierced out the negative entity saw that as a weak point and targeted there and then the infection slash red bump is not going away because it's a manifestation of negative energy that's being shown in the physical body so yes that could be a problem if the beach were on the ground is cursed can I ground with the intention that I only that uncorrupted... I mean, where are you going that the beach is cursed? <laughs> it takes a lot of effort to curse a beach. No, don't go to cursed beaches. Um, you can't really ground in cursed beaches. You can, but you'd be better off just grounding in your bedroom because um, you wouldn't be having to fight the beach while you're there. Um... If you have PTSD, nervous, you'll have to explain what, what that is. Um, if your nervous system damage is caused by basically emotional trauma, like it acts up when your emotions are flowing up, then yes, this will clear those things out of your nervous system. It won't clear the emotional aspect of it. Um, I have an emotional video uh, on my channel and I'll also redo another one in the future because um, I know a lot more about emotional clearing now. Um, will this video help with Lyme disease? If Lyme disease is targeting your nervous system, then yes. If if it's targeting your muscular system, which, which it can, it, Lyme disease kind of goes everywhere, um, then no. Can you ground from the fifth floor? Yes. Yeah, I used to ground from the third floor of a house, so that's no issue. Now, what this video is, I'm just going to get back on track. It's grounding internally. Uh, what I mean by that is, this video is not taking your energy and dispersing it. It's taking you and moving your you away from the negative things. So this is essentially grounding you up and out of negative realms. Um, this will essentially raise your frequency or raise your vibrations as well. Um, but it will actually do that as opposed to just talking about it. Um, so essentially parts of your energy will get stolen and they'll be in just negative entity realms. There'll be negative entity realms inside of you. What this video will do is it will retrieve your stolen energy and it will clear those negative entity realms. Um, and it will mainly ground you back into your body. So you may feel yourself becoming more dense and more heavy. Um, that sensation will pass, but that's a good sign. As you're getting more dense, that means more and more of your energy is coming into you. I had a lot of trouble being grounded, um, especially because I used to live in a super cursed house. So essentially the frequency thing is real. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about so there's essentially a series of numbers and the low numbers all correlate with like sadness, depression, anger lust, etc and then the positive emotions are like happiness joy, love um, gratitude, etc now these are very real in people but they also tend to exist for surroundings. So if you are trying to, let's say you're trying to be in a, just a state of happiness, right? It's going to be really hard if your house is just in a malice energetic frequency. Um, so you can often tell a house that is in a positive frequency, you won't see sh shadows on the wall. That, that's a rather extreme example. You'll, you'll come in and you'll feel welcome in your house. You'll even feel welcome driving in. A negative um, frequency house you'll drive in and you'll feel like dread <laughs> and cold um, frequencies you can also differentiate them by between warmth and coldness as well so as you're in your body what you should feel is and you'll feel this in numerous parts throughout your body so this is going to ground your major energy centers it's going to ground your heart your head and your stomach and then you should also feel it in your hands and feet. What you should feel, to an extent, is, depending on how energy sensitive you are, is the energy just coming out of your hands like like that, like there's tree roots coming out and dispersing it. This is using my energy, not nature's energy, um, to ground. Can you ground through shoes? You can ground through shoes. You're better off barefoot, but you can do it through shoes. It's just easy barefoot. 
Um, using this video, you can just sit there and, and let it ground you. There's no problem with that. Um, you can also play when you go out. You can play any of the indie videos and just put them on and say, I want to have this intention for it to work on me. If you do go out, this video does have an area of effect. Um, it depends on how dense um, or how clear your area is for how far it will go. But it does certainly have a large um, radius. So if you go out, you can leave the video on and the other people around you will also have their nervous system and um, and you know energy body grounded as well. This isn't just grounding your energy body, it's grounding a lot of different layers of your energy. Um, I'm not touching the emotional stuff right now because that's better off being a separate video. But it, it'll ground your energy body, code body, crystal body, um, a lot of different aspects of self. It'll ground your overall energy. Um, so overall, as this place, you should feel just more, more in your own body, more in your own head, but also being more clear. Um, one thing to do with grounding. So when I first got into energy work, I didn't really, I wasn't like, I need to get out of my body and leave this world because it sucks. No, I was just, I want power. I want to kill these things that are attacking me. I want revenge. I had very, very good motivations and I got, I got that. I, you know, killed pretty much, all, and by kill, these negative entities, they're not, it's not like a person who's got a soul. They're basically conscious beings, they're video game monsters, right? So after a while of interrogating them going, oh, they're all, there's nothing here. It's just video game monsters. I didn't really have any anger anymore. It's just like, oh, all right, this is just a very tedious video game at this point. Um, but a lot of people get into energy training or just energy work in general because they have fibromyalgia, they have arthritis, they have some very, very serious health problems and they're in chronic pain. I used to be in chronic pain on and off all, all the time just for no reason and it was just entities like, yeah, yeah, let's stab him here, let's <laughs> kick him in the stomach. It's caused a whole bunch of problems which I now fortunately don't have. Um, and so for a lot of people, my, their goal is to astral project. It is to escape their body just get out of this body, it hurts, it's really bad, it's terrible, and leave. Now, while I can understand that, um, and I'm not really one for astral projection, just because it, it takes a lot of prep work, and <laughs> I just like remote viewing, really. I can do it instantly. If, if I get to a point where I can astral project instantly, I'd, I'd probably look into it much more. Um, I probably will get there, but for the time being, that's not a focus. But, your goal really should be to energetically get your nervous system clear, to energetically ground to the point where you can actually enjoy being in your body, to the point where you can clear whatever illnesses are plaguing you, at least to the point where they're really not on your mind, where you're not in just random pain all the time, and you can relax, right? That's a much better goal than just escaping your body because until you die, you're really you're stuck with this body, right? This is a vessel. It's important. You do need to try and take care of it. And even if you've had nerve pain for, let's say, 30 years from an illness that just hit you out, out of the sky, like, you know, just fell on you when you were 16, you can clear that. And then you'll be able to, okay, so you're 30, all right? And how long you live? 400? So you've got 370 <laughs> years of being able to be at peace in your body. Um, that's a goal you, sh you should go for, um, rather than try and spend all your time es escaping your body. That's my mindset um, on that anyway. If you have a different mindset, you know, feel free to write it out. Can I ground from an airplane? No, don't ground on airplanes. Don't do that. Um, no, bad. That's that's terrible. If you're on an airplane, just fully go inside. Don't go outside whatsoever. Airplanes are terrible. Awful. Is there a way to tell whether the nervous system damage is caused by a physical reason or entity attacks? My right arm is numb for years and you have no clue what caused it. Well, if you have no clue what caused it and you weren't bitten by, you know, a super poisonous spider or anything else, then it would, it's safe to assume it's an energetic cause. Even if you were bitten by a spider, you can clear that poison energetically um, as well. I've always had problems staying ground. I recently bought grounding mats for laptops and a grounding sheet for my bed. They seem to help. Yeah, I have no experience with grounding uh, mats, but I am most likely going to try them in the future. Um, there was another question that I missed. You're doing somatic experience training.
Um, I have no idea about that. I use... I... For any kind of trauma clearing, and I know I said I'd make a video on it, um... <laughs> once my brain lets me really work on things that aren't energy work, <laughs> I'll, um, I'll do that. No, I, I have no, um... Op opinion on that. In general, um... With, with energy work whatsoever, as you go through, you know, feel free to come with your own ideas. Take, take something I talk about and do it yourself. And if you energetically feel, and it, it comes from a positive place, that, a, you know, a variation of it or changing it will work better for you, then do that. Don't, um, now, don't start calling in things. Don't do that. But overall, you know, so long as you're going with it and using your own energy, you know, feel free to um, try, try various things. What do I think about procrastination caused by entities targeting your nervous system and brain? I noticed that um, with a joy, the feeling of e its energy drain is followed by brain fog and mental confusion. Yeah, negative entities, this used to be a problem for me. They, they were okay if I played video games. They were okay if I wrote things that weren't helping me. But if I went to read business books or if I went to try and do business things, um, this was years ago, 2018. The first day, I, or even if I was in some language, I could learn, no problem. The next day, it was like, giant hands were on my head and I couldn't think and I'd have to spend three days not being productive in order to get it to lift. So yeah, they certainly do do that. And you'll often see it happening as um, as it goes along and it's really, really annoying. Um, this video will help with that. Um, I will do a brain video on the future. But overall, yeah, they certainly do do that. Uh, could you have been targeted during dental surgery? Yes, often with surgery, negative entities will target you as that is, number one, it's traumatic anyway. And number two, if they're piercing something or, you know, pulling your wisdom teeth out, that affects your energy body quite a lot. And they, yeah, they certainly target there. And negative entities will often reside in hospitals and um, dental surgeries just so they can t wait for particular people with the kind of energy they like. And then, yep, they just invade right in them as they're being you know, for lack of a better word, damaged, right? Pulling your teeth out, you know it most likely had to be done, but it's damaged onto you, and yeah, they target that trauma point pretty much straight away. Is there a good way to ground indoors? Yes. Do the exact same technique in class two indoors. <laughs> I didn't used to go out that much to ground, I just do it inside. Um, there's no issue with that. It's more efficient outside, but you can do it inside, no problem. Um, so, Essentially, uh, I'm just re restating this because it's important. This video will ground you up and out of negative realms. You're not being grounded in. If you're losing your magic powers that the fairies granted you, that's okay. All right, you're going to lose them. And then three months from now, you'll have your own variation of that. And if so long as you train, if you don't train four years from now, but if you train three months from now, you'll have your own variation of that fairy technique and it'll actually be positive and useful and it won't be at the beck and call of someone else who can just, you know, get out of you if you start grounding. Um, so yeah, so you're going up and out. Um, as you play this, your mental chatter should decrease. You should just feel happier and just more clear overall. With grounding, um, I'll just talk about a few various meditations you can do. Um, I haven't, the only grounding meditation I did that I actually read about was um, the one I teach in class too. There are, as long as you use your intention and you can move energy, you can, you know, do various grounding meditations however you want to. Um, unless you're at a very clear nature energy, not nature energy, nature area. So, for example, um, the, the person who mentioned they would have cursed speech before, right? Don't ground <laughs> If you're in a clear nature area, great. Go ahead, stand there, ground. If you're first starting off, it's really not a problem, but when you actually start gaining energetic strength, just connecting, you, you can connect through nature, but if it's really hard and there's a lot of blockages, especially if you're living in a demonic neighborhood or you're in a major city like New York or somewhere really, really dark, um, grounding there will be very hard. So it is much safe for you as you gain power and things actually start paying more attention to you 
it, to go within yourself to ground. So what you can do, um, you can do this technique right now, all right? Ground a meditation for um, clearing your own energy, all right? You're just going to picture white space, okay? You're going to start with a white canvas. If you can do that, terrific. If you can't, no issues. Next, in the white space, you're just going to picture, um, so say, a pond or a lake and just put some rocks around it. All right, there's trees. You can put a mountain there. You can put mountains that way. You can keep it as simple as you want or as complex as you want. You're just hitting the scene right now. Then the water, you can uh, let's have this have a granny effect as this is a grounding meditation. So what you'll do is you, okay, you've got this lake. You can make it as deep as you want. You can make it that you're standing in it and it goes up to your ankles or you can make it that it's humongous and you're in a giant body of water, all right? So I'll make mine humongous. So what you do is you go in there, you can make it as warm or as cold as you want. So, okay, put a sun in the sky, um, nice yellow sun. All right, so now it's warm. This is how you go about when you are just creating techniques, you know, play around, try with it. Okay, so you hop in the water, um, unless you're already in, I'm already in there, okay? Uh, you can go deep into the water, you can, it really depends, it's up to you, feel the water, try and physically feel it as much as you can. Now you say, how do I do that? What I mean by that is, so you've most likely been in water before. You've most likely even been under the water before, right? So you know what the sensation of being in water is like. So. You'll feel yourself going under the water slowly, um, or as fast as you want really, but okay, so you slowly go under, fully under, you should just feel water all around your body, good. Now you're gonna picture the water coming to your body and it's gonna go through you, um, we'll keep it simple, all right? So to start with, it's gonna go, and th this will be good for training your own energy as well. If you can't do this to start with, that's fine. Picture the water going in through your back, in behind you, and then it's taking out, the water's then coming through you and taking out all the negative toxins with you. Now you think, hang on, I'm just putting negative toxins into the lake I'm in. And the answer is yes, yes you are. So what you're gonna do is at the bottom of the lake, you're going to picture um, basically a whirlpool. And you can you can do one or two things here. Um, we'll keep it simple. So you want the energy to go through the whirlpool, right? So water's coming out of you and then down and you want it to make the intention to ground all this energy out of your feet. Um, if you're having trouble with that, you can picture the water coming down through your head, through your whole body, out of your hands and feet, and then into, um, down through the water, into the vortex, and then that will ground the energy out of your hands and feet um, using those pathways. You can also, instead of having a vortex that grounds out, you can make just a very strong vortex that has the intention to erase energy. Now, depending on how strong you are, you may send that out and you say, it didn't erase everything. And the answer is yes. Your energetic strength is not strong enough to clear quickly enough all the stuff that's coming out of you. So if that's happening and demons and stuff are getting stuck on the bottom of your lake, um, then you may just want to keep your intention at grounding. Why is this reality so infested with negative entities? Because it's a, a farm. That, that's why if um, it's the current state it's in it's been done it's been made like this deliberately it would well, say it's it, it the matrix was not made like this it, it has become this way deliberately can shungrat be used for grounding yes shungrat can be used for grounding um, without any issues this video will not ground you from EMFs or anything like that that'll be a separate video but this energy will energetically ground you um, so that's one grounding meditation, okay? So you, you can keep doing that one. Or what this video is doing, the way I created this energy, um, what you're going to picture is you're gonna picture a grassy green plain, um, and we'll make the grass green and gold, all right? Be golden as well. Um, okay, so just picture the grass half green, half gold. And then what you're going to picture is a tree energetically, not physically, but energetically coming around you. So it's it's etheric, it's see-through, right? It's um, around you. And then you'll picture this tree fully go around you. And then the tree's energy, um, which would be my energy, it's the video's energy, will come through you and then go through and then you will feel your energy grounding out onto the ground and dispersing. Now, if you need to physically ground um, quickly, it's easier if you're, out, if you're outside, you can just put both feet, even if you've got shoes on, and your hands on the ground, and just make the intention to push negative energy into the ground. 
Um, and you can do that. You'll just feel the energy coming out. Or you can, um, if you've got any kind of, it's easier with a wood table, but any kind of table, you can put your hand on there and just picture it going into the table and then down and grounding out. Um, careful, don't do that too much because you, you'll need to clear your table if you're not grounding very well. Uh, you've done a lot of energy work to little benefit. Is that because you're energetically weak? Should you just focus on grounding? No, you should focus on you know getting energetically stronger. Grounding is very important, but the way energy work works is it's got a massive compounding effect. Okay, it's like a snowball. So when you first start, it's teeny tiny, and then as you go, the more you train, the more your growth rate increases. So let's just say the first two years of tech, the first three years of training, right, that I did. It was very worthwhile. I trained and trained, I got stronger and stronger and stronger. But now, each day with the training I do, I gain more than it took for me to gain the first three years because I'm like with working out, okay, you've, to, to an extent, depends, the, forget, we'll forget about the energetic part for now, but physically working out, okay, you work out and you just have to do it for years and you'll have a steady, consistent growth. With energy training, you will grow this much in the first year, and then the second year you grow that much, and then the third year that much, and the fourth year you'll be, and then it just gets absolutely ridiculous. Um, your growth rate will just keep increasing. So you just have to be consistent with it and know that your growth rate will increase and it just, it does get much easier the more you do, um, really the more you train. So even if you feel like right now it's, it's not beneficial, it certainly will be in the future so long as you just keep it up and don't quit. You know, it's it's one thing that has always paid dividends for me massively. Um, and even if you take a break, so let's say you went you train for a year and then you take three months off, you, you, something happens, you, you don't have the time, or you get a massive blockage, you'll come back after those three months. And unlike with physical activity, where you would have gone backwards quite a lot, with energy activity, you don't. You, you tend to knock up, you might have some more blockages and some other things put in you, but overall, your energy strength has most likely even gone up a bit. So, does anyone have any questions about nervous system clearing or grounding? Can someone get energetically stronger without deliberately draining? Well, if you just play the energetic expansion video, yes. It, heck, even if you're playing it because it has a area of effect range, then yes, your neighbors or any cats or dogs around you that aren't energy training will get energetically stronger from that. But in general, in order to know how to utilize your own energy, in order to know how to train, um, no, no, train, in order to utilize your energy, in order to have the ability and the strength to really get things done with energy to fight negative entities, etc., you do need to train. Um, it's a question like that is. Um, can someone get physically stronger without deliberately training? The answer is yes. Okay, if you get a job and you're just peering, uh, pouring beer all day, you're going to get muscular arms to, just from living your life. If you're getting energetically targeted, you may not have trained, but the whole time, if you were just fighting back, let's say you got a really bad illness and you just fought back against it mentally, you, that is training your energy um, to an extent. Now, you're, but you're, it's more efficient to just sit down and properly train your energy, yes. but you can build energy strength without deliberately training. And there are people who can get decent energetic strength without ever really trying to train. Um, somebody also asked, is yoga good for grounding? And the answer is, so long as you are using your own energy, then yes, your yoga can be good for grounding. Any kind of physical activity, uh, activity can be good for grounding. So, um, Working out in particular can be very grounding as you're moving around your physical body, which is also moving around your energy, which is helping you ground and clear. Um, that dream may not really mean that you need to ground more, but being grounded does help prevent um, negative entities interfering with your dreams and um, causing nightmares. Uh, I wouldn't say, no, nightmares are not a symptom of your nervous system being targeted um, unless they've caused physical trauma there. If they've caused a physical trauma there, then that gives them an in to more easily manipulate your dreams. But overall, no, it's not necessarily a symptom. 
Um, I've learned a lot about how dreams work and invasions and all of that. I and dreamscape. I'm going to talk about that in the future. It's definitely um, a complex topic and something that needs its own video. It's good. Um, just thinking if there's anything else I should really talk about. Oh, I'll talk about this. So, with phantom pains, if you're having phantom pains, this video will help um, clear them. Especially if it's after your injury. So, for, for example, the person who had their wisdom teeth pulled out. Um, this will help clear the trauma wounds. It will help clear the, clear the energetic damage that it caused. Um, this is not really a trauma wound video, but it will help you with that. So if you have had a surgery and you're getting pains after it, um, which does often happen, then this this will help quite a bit. Now, it may even hit the energy damage and you suddenly feel like, oh, I've had the surgery. That's fine. It'll go through and clear it. Um, I'm not going to talk about the original right now. Um, any other, I'll just talk about, so for you, you can feel free to use this video um, and have it on while you're doing your own grounding technique. So feel free to visualize, you know, really whatever you want. If you want to picture yourself, if you have a beach nearby, um, I don't recommend, so this, this is a common misconception. Um, you, you can ground by picturing a local beach or a local park and grounding. But to do that, what you're doing is you're basically, you're taking your... Um, part of your consciousness and you are remote viewing there right and you can ground that and I've done that a lot but especially um, if your beach isn't that clear what you can do instead is make the intention to go within so you'll say I don't want to go to the beach outside um, you can even picture a lock and remember this technique this is a very good one so you'll picture an energetic lock and you will just say block me from remote viewing this particular beach right and then and then you'll say, okay, I want to ground and I want to use the beach where near me or a beach that you had in your childhood, right? You can even have the cars be from like the 1980s. And then you will picture the beach in your mind. Now you don't want, you you don't really want other people around as um, when you're first starting because negative entities can then hijack or not so much hijack, they can get in and then disguise themselves as that and that can cause problems and they can mess with you. But you'll picture the beach and if you're like, oh, am I at the beach or am I in my mind? Just make the intention to feel the lock or, or see it. And then you'll see yourself on the beach and then you can picture yourself grounding within. Um, or you can picture yourself, you can be in your room and you can be grounding into the floor, but picturing yourself um, at the beach within. Now, if your beach is clear and it's, it's a great beach, you can feel free to remote view to it and stand there where you want. Um, is this a good technique? You stand and fold your body to hang downwards towards your feet and put the palms of your hands to the ground and picture negative energy flowing to the ground. Yes. Yeah, with grounding, there's no... So long as the energy is coming out of your hands and feet, um, there's not really any wrong way to do it. It's it's really simple. <laughs> Does thinking a lot unground you? No. I, I would say... Not really. If you're having a lot of negative thought loops, yes, and grounding will help gradually decrease that and then prevent it from happening. So thank you everyone. I'll see you for a heart clearing tomorrow. <laughs>